the law and you a look at laws in st vincent and the grenadines which affect our daily lives the law and the you law presented and by you. lawyer panel r campbell qc and brought to you on svg tv as a public service ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters boys and girls greetings welcome to another presentation in this public service nation building series the law and you this is program number 906 coming to you on Monday, the 23rd of July, 2018. On this program, I will speak to you on the topic, the Caribbean Court of Justice, the CCJ. But before getting into the program, just two short preliminaries, both by way of messages of condolences. First of all, my deepest condolences go out to the family of the late Honorable Yvonne Francis Gibson, who by the time you are listening to this program would have been laid to rest earlier today. In fact, I have made a special arrangement with my videographers to tape the program early so that I could attend the funeral of that beloved sister, served in government for many years, and was a stalwart representative for the West St. George constituency. Secondly, one of my boyhood friends, Mr. Garnet, brother Oliver of Rockies, will be laid to rest tomorrow afternoon. Brother, as we knew him, was one of the young lads at Rockies when we moved up there in 1960. And he has been my practical lifelong friend since that time. My deepest sympathies go out to his relatives. And I intend to make it to his funeral service tomorrow afternoon, God's willing. Okay, let me get straight into the topic, the CCJ, the Caribbean Court of Justice. As practically everybody would know by now, on Friday, the 20th of July, that is Friday just passed, there was a symbolic sitting, a ceremonial sitting of the Caribbean Court of Justice in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It took place upstairs, the courthouse, where the House of Assembly normally meets. The CCJ is our court of original jurisdiction in matters pertaining to the interpretation of the Treaty of Chagaramas. That is, matters having to do with the CARICOM financial and economic arrangements. All countries of CARICOM belong to the CCJ in its original jurisdiction. That is, all CARICOM countries which have signed up to the Treaty of Chagaramas can only take disputes arising out of the treaty obligations to the CCJ, that is the only court constituted to hear disputes, so that if one merchant in one CARICOM country has a dispute with another merchant in another CARICOM country, or indeed the same CARICOM country, and it involves the interpretation of the Treaty of Chagaramas, that person who has the complaint cannot go to the High Court with that complaint he or she has to file the action with the CCJ because the CCJ is the court designated by CARICOM to deal with disputes arising from the CARICOM arrangements. But in addition, the CCJ has what is called an appellate jurisdiction, that is, it functions as a court of final appeal from any CARICOM country that wishes to use it for that purpose. 
the court was inaugurated as long ago as the 16th of July, 2005. I was present at that inaugural opening of the court at the Queen's Hall in Port of Spain. But since 2005, only four CARICOM countries have been using the CCJ as their final court of appeal. Four. Fortunately, we hear that several other countries are at the moment taking steps to use the CCJ as their final court. Arrangements are being made as I speak in St. Lucia, in St. Kitts, in Antigua, and even in Jamaica, I hear arrangements being made to accede to the appellate jurisdiction of the CCJ. But so far, the only four CARICOM countries which use the CCJ as their final court of appeal are Guyana, Barbados, Belize, and Dominica. The CCJ as a final appellate court replaces the Privy Council. in those countries which have acceded to the CCJ's appellate jurisdiction. Right now, the Privy Council, and to give it its full legal name, it's the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, is the final court of appeal from all the other Commonwealth Caribbean countries except those which have cut off the jurisdiction of the Privy Council and are using the CCJ. So that appeals from all of the Commonwealth Caribbean countries, except Guyana, Barbados, Belize, and Dominica, the appeals from all the others still go to the Privy Council in London. Therefore, Countries, independent countries, face a choice. They can either opt to use the CCJ as their final court, or they can remain with the Privy Council as their final court. So it's either or. Those in St. Vincent and the Grenadines who are not too young to remember would recall that during the period 2003 to 2009, we had a massive exercise in this country aimed at revising our independence constitution. I had the honor to have been chairman for most of that time of the CRC, the Constitutional Review Commission, and it culminated in a referendum held in November 2009 where a Constitution Amendment Bill was placed before the people in a referendum having passed the parliament with the requisite two-thirds majority of the elected members. It would still be fresh in the memories of most people that that bill was rejected by the electorate of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, who said they wanted to keep the constitution as it is. One of the provisions of that constitution would have allowed 
St. Vincent and the Grenadines, if it had passed, by a simple majority in Parliament to accede to the appellate jurisdiction of the CCJ by means of departing from the Privy Council. So the Constitution Bill itself did not automatically seek to remove the Privy Council, but it simply made it easier for the Privy Council's removal by Parliament. Excuse me. Now, in the course of this program, and perhaps next week's program, I want to venture some of the main reasons why many people believe, including myself, that St. Vincent and Grenadines should cease using the Privy Council as its final court of appeal and should begin to use the Caribbean Court of Justice for several good reasons. Now, I know there are those who are adamantly opposed to that. And as a good Democrat, I respect the views of those who oppose. But I disagree extremely strongly with those views <laughs> for several reasons. For one thing, since 1979, we have called ourselves an independent country. But a country cannot be fully independent if it depends on the judges in another country to have the final say on the interpretation and application of its laws. Therefore, in a real sense, we in this country have not been fully independent in that one of the main attributes of independence is having our own court to pronounce finally on our legal disputes. And that is why, as countries in the past got independence from England, most of them, if not at independence, but shortly thereafter, who were former colonies of the United Kingdom, removed themselves from the jurisdiction of the Privy Council in favor of the jurisdiction of their own final court of appeal. Because sovereignty involves making one's own final decisions. <laughs> and therefore, we can't say we have come out of colonialism and still look to the highest colonial court for our final decision making. This is not to say that those who sit in the Privy Council are not competent. Of course they are. The members of the British Supreme Court are the ones who sit in the Privy Council. And I have every respect for the quality of British justice. Therefore, I do not want to imply that somehow we have had substandard justice from the Privy Council, far from it. And I will tell you a little more about that shortly. But the point is, <laughs> it is simply not a Caribbean court. And law involves 
many aspects of the growth and development of society. And something is wrong <laughs> where there are judges who dispense justice for a distant country and know nothing about the society of that country or know very little about the country and its aspirations, its norms, its directions in which it wants to grow. These are things which are inherent in the sovereignty of a people. And it is embarrassing. Every now and then you read a judgment from the Privy Council and the British judges say, look, we have to leave this matter for the local judges of the country from which the appeal has come because we do not know enough about their society to make pronouncements on certain aspects of the case. That occurs fairly frequently in the judgments of the Privy Council. The judges say, look, we leave this to the local judges to develop as they see fit because we are not a part of that society. Not only that, but it's embarrassing in the last 40 years from time to time to hear British judges beg Caribbean countries to use their own court of appeal. <laughs> and and one, one such British judge speaking in the Caribbean practically implored Caribbean countries. They said, now you have your own court of appeal, which is the, your own final court, the CCJ. Why not use it? And at the time, there was quite a lot of flurry in the Caribbean because those of us who are strongly in support of the CCJ were embarrassed one senior British judge went as far as to say that too much of their time is taken up with dealing with appeals from countries which still send appeals to London and is, those countries are using up a disproportionate amount of the time of the British judges. And he said, look, you know what? we are going to have to reconfigure the court. And when a lot of these appeals come to us to save judicial time, we are going to let three judges sit instead of the normal five because we can't afford the time that these cases are taken up. We have our British work to do. Now, being polite and well-mannerly, the official attitude of the Privy Council is that, look, as long as a country wants to continue to use the Privy Council, the judges say we'll make ourselves available. But the time will come, and from time to time, senior politicians in England make threats to abolish the Privy Council in England. And the time could well arrive when we have no Privy Council to go to in England because the British, as part of their reform, might decide to abolish the Privy Council themselves, regard it as a colonial relic. That is one aspect of the reasoning for us to use our... Before the CCJ came into being, the argument used to be to get your own final court. Well, we got our own final court, and it got going in July 2005. The cry now is to use your own final court because you have it. But those arguments based on nationalism and national pride and independence 
do not constitute the whole of the story. To me, one of the most grievous aspects of having to appeal to the Privy Council in London for our final court is that it is too expensive, <laughs> much too expensive. If you want to appeal to the Privy Council, unless you are very rich or unless you are a condemned murderer, you better find at least 250,000 EC dollars to get your appeal off the ground. 250,000. A couple of years ago, when former Prime Minister Sir James Mitchell filed an appeal before the Privy Council, he pointed out that it cost him nearly half a million EC dollars in legal costs. Fortunately, he won the case and was awarded his costs. But before he was awarded those costs, he had to find nearly half a million dollars just to file his appeal in London and to instruct counsel, both from the Caribbean and London, to do his case. How many people could afford half a million dollars <laughs> to have an appeal launched in London? Whereas, if you had to file an appeal, if we had the CCG as our final court, and a litigant wanted to appeal, it might cost him twenty-five to 40,000 EC dollars if so much, to have that appeal filed in the Caribbean. And the CCJ is an itinerant court. It has sat where the seat of the court is in Trinidad and Tobago, but it has also sat in Barbados, and indeed in Belize. And going to Trinidad <laughs> to prosecute a case before the CCJ will only cost a fraction of what it costs now to go to London. Which is why when we had the ceremonial sitting of the CCJ last week, Friday, Justice Adrian Saunders, who is the new president of the CCJ, pointed out that in 30 years, in the last 3030 years, less than 15 cases were sent from St. Vincent to the Privy Council. So for litigants in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, if there is a judgment of the Court of Appeal that you do not agree with and you want to test, you can't because you simply cannot afford what it costs. I made an exception for condemned murderers. Condemned murderers get free <laughs> legal services from UK lawyers as part of the human rights services provided pro bono, that is, without charging. So the lawyers who specialize in death penalty cases, they don't charge the litigants here. There's a fund out of which they are paid. So it is ridiculous to know that for you to get final justice, you either have to be a murderer on death row or very rich to be able to afford what it costs to go to, to London. And if you have to engage an English QC, a fellow barrister told me not more than four weeks ago that he had a quotation from an English QC as to his fees, and the English QC told him 
that he charges 850 pounds per hour for his services. 850 pounds. And I'm sure there are English QCs who charge more than that per hour. So the Privy Council is far beyond the pockets of the ordinary man, who, man or woman, who has an appeal or wants to appeal against, against the judgment of the Court of Appeal. But once the Court of Appeal pronounces a judgment, you might as well forget the Privy Council exists. You simply can't dream to afford. The CCJ has now had its third president since it was launched in 2005. The first president was Mr. Justice the Honorable de la Bastide of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> now, the court is located in Trinidad and Tobago. I think it's 134 Henry Street. That is where the court sits as its home base. Justice de la Bastide was the first president, inaugurated with great flourish on a Saturday, the 16th of August, 2005, in Queen's Hall. Pump and ceremony. I was there along with other Vincentian lawyers. Trinidad and Tobago, for political reasons, is not part of the appellate jurisdiction of the CCJ. And therefore, the Trinidad and Tobago, the Trinidadian who was president of the court, did not have the pleasure of his own country being in the CCJ of which he was head. Second president of the court, Justice Byron, his Honorable Justice Byron, who used to be our Chief Justice here in the Eastern Caribbean. He is from St. Kitts Nevis. St. Kitts Nevis does not belong to the CCJ. So he went through his seven-year term of office without his own home country being part of the court over which he was head. Now, as from the 4th of July this year, the president of the court, the third president in its history, is the Honorable Justice Adrian Saunders, our own son of the soil, whom we honored last week, Friday, at the House of Assembly Chambers. A brilliant and patriotic son of the soil. Vincentians, come on. You're going to tell me that you don't trust the integrity of our own son of the soil, Justice Adrian Saunders? You don't trust his legal skills? You want to tell me we don't have the, 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 the wherewithal to honor our own by St. Vincent joining the court of which he is now head? When I come to do next week's program, Divi, God willing, I will go more into the topic. But I would wish and I would also indicate that it is now far easier for our parliament to pass the law, to move us into the CCJ because we no longer need a referendum for that purpose here in St. Vincent, but I will discuss all of that with you next week, Monday Divi. But I just want to say that I will be a campaigner and I will be beseeching the government and beseeching the opposition on behalf of the CCJ. It's time we in St. Vincent and the Grenadines do the right thing, <laughs> the honorable thing, the sensible thing, and get into our own court rather than having the Privy Council as our final court, which 13 people 
in the last 30 years were able to use because of the, largely because of the expense. But I will say more on the topic next week, Monday, DV. So for now, may the good Lord continue to bless us in this Hirona land of the blessed. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls, Godspeed. The law and you. A look at laws in St. Vincent and the Grenadines which affect our daily lives. The law and you. Law presented and by you. lawyer panel R. Campbell, QC. And brought to you on SVG TV as a public service.